Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared two multiple choice questions for you and as usual I recommend you to pause video here, read the questions, choose your correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first question. If the haploid chromosome number of plant is 16, how many chromosomes would a tetraploid have? And here is the... Um, four answers to choose from. If you are confused which answer to choose, here is my explanation. Imagine that we have uh, some fictional organism with only three chromosomes. So uh, I would use different color to designate each chromosome and as you see this would be organism with only one set of chromosomes. Normally, uh, animals are diploid and have two sets of the chromosomes and have two same kind of chromosomes. One set of chromosome uh, from the mother side, another set of chromosome from the father side and we call such organism is diploid and of course gametes that such organism would produce would be haploid and would have only one set of chromosomes. Uh, female gametes would be egg cells and male gametes would be sperm. So both uh, male and female gametes would be haploid. But uh, for example in plant kingdom uh, we may also find situation where some of the plants can be triploid for example and uh, many of the domesticated plants are triploid. For example, um, many of the seedless plants uh, that has seedless fruits, for example, uh, watermelon, pears, apples, uh, grapes, uh, when you find them without seeds, most likely that means that those plants are triploid. And because three chromosomes cannot be divided equally uh, between uh, gametes, so whether two chromosomes would end uh, in one gamete and one chromosome in another, so this usually leads to infertility in such plants. So they do not produce seeds. And uh, of course we have another variant in plants, for example, once again, because we uh, normally do not see uh, polyploidy in animals, when plants can be tetraploid and plants uh, would have four sets of chromosomes. We can find each chromosome uh, in number four. So if you think uh, that uh, in order to find the answer, we have to multiply 16 by 4 because this is haploid and uh, in order to find number of chromosomes in tetraploid we just have to multiply this number by 4. This is not correct answer. This is not answer D. This is not 64 chromosomes. And uh, here is my explanation. Uh, so as you see uh, in diploid organism haploid number would be half of what diploid organism have. Uh, so if we have here two sets of chromosomes in gametes we would find only one set of chromosomes. And uh, we told that uh, chromosome number of the plant is 16 and uh, what is the uh, number in tetraploid. And here is example of the tetraploid and in tetraploid each gamete would have two sets of chromosomes. So this organism would produce um, gametes with two sets of chromosomes in each gamete. So if uh, chromosome number in a gamete 16, that means we have two sets of chromosomes. So actually uh, number of chromosomes is 8 in the gametes and uh, eight chromosomes and gametes 
present in two copies. And once again, this is tetraploid organism, and uh, each tetraploid organism would produce diploid gametes. So, once again, if we have 16 chromosome, and this is haploid number of the tetraploid organism, that means that each chromosome is present in two copies. So, we have eight chromosomes, each chromosome present in two copies. So, we have uh, total number 16. In order to be clear, let me write down all the pairs. So, now we have six pairs, and this is seven pair and eight pair. So, as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight chromosomes, each chromosome present uh, in two copies because this is a uh, gamete of the tetraploid organism. So each chromosome present in two copies. So uh, in order to give an answer, we have to multiply 8 by 2. So total number of chromosomes in the gamete would be uh, 16, and gamete would be haploid representation of the tetraploid organism, and in tetraploid organism, we would have double number of the chromosomes. So we have to multiply 16 by 2. And the answer would be 32. In uh, tetraploid organism, we would find uh, 32 um, chromosomes. And not 64, as you probably initially... Uh, my thing. One more example for you to be uh, absolutely clear about uh, haploidy. Uh, imagine that uh, most of the domesticated plants and uh, grains are polyploid. For example, rye is hexaploid, and haploid number would be uh, that we can find uh, in gametes would be triploidy. So triploidy would be half the number of hexaploid plant. And for example, another example would be uh, strawberry. Strawberry can be octaploid and decaploid. And of course, haploid number would be then uh, tetraploid and pentaploid respectively. And next question. Plants that are naturally cross-pollinated tend to become and here is the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six answers to choose from. And I have a hint for you. This is not uh, the answer F. None of the above. There is a correct answer. And uh, this is not answer E. All of the above. Only one correct answer here. And uh, I can also cross answer B. This is obvious not a correct answer. And, uh, of course, when we cross-pollinate plants, uh, that doesn't lead to for them to become haploid. Only gametes can be haploid, and uh, gametes of the plants uh, would be egg cell and pollen. And after fertilization event, we would get a zygote, and ploidy level would be restored. And... Uh, now we have to choose between answer A, homozygous, and answer D, heterozygous. And uh, the correct answer would be heterozygous. And uh, we are going to get homozygous plants if we would self-pollinate plants. So uh, self-pollination generation after generation would lead to loss of heterozygosity and most of the lasai in the plant would become uh, homozygous and eventually after about 10 generations we are going to get a pure line uh, such plants that uh, would be genetically the same 
and uh, we are going to get heterozygosity if we would cross uh, plants that would be distantly uh, related or not necessarily distantly related but at least would originate uh, from the different fields so would have uh, greater uh, heterozygosity would have more loci that would differ uh, one plant may have uh, one kind of allele in uh, some kind of locus another plant would uh, have another type of allele and of course when we cross these two plants uh, the progeny would be more uh, would have more heterozygous loci than uh, the uh, parental generation so we would increase heterozygosity when we cross pollinate and we would increase homozygosity when we self pollinate plants and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video goodbye